moment with Nabila as they say football is the only game that puts the world brings everybody together on our star guest today you have to wait to see what we have for you and like always you would see talent discovery stay tuned Centre-back William Paul Trust Ekong currently plays for Premier League side Watford and is also captain of the Nigerian national team. He made his debut for Nigeria in 2015 and has over 56 appearances under his belt. Welcome to Footy Moment with Nabila. Guess who I have today on the show? I have with me William Trust Ekong. Hi Ekong, welcome on the show. Thank you very much. I'm yeah, happy to be part of the show today. <laughs> so, you're back in the most exciting league in the world, the Premier League. So tell us, how do you feel? Yeah, it's been um, my biggest dream was always to play in England and especially in the Premier League. So. It's been something that I've been working for ever since I was a little boy. Mm -hmm. So it's a real satisfaction, obviously, getting the promotion with Watford and now finally making my Premier League, Premier League debut. So it's, yeah, it's an amazing feeling. I'm really proud and it feels like I'm living my dream. Exciting. So tell me, what do you hope to achieve this season, personally and also for Watford? Um, the main goal is going to be for the team to stay in the Premier League. I mean, everybody knows how difficult it is to um, yeah, stay in the Premier League and there's so many good players in the Premier and so many good teams that it's going to be a real challenge um, and then yeah secondly I think if we can do that then I can contribute by playing as much as I can um, then that will be the best situation I'm really happy that I've managed to play all the games so far and uh, my personal target would just be to contribute as much as I can and hopefully play 30 of games or more. So another interesting thing is happening right now in the Premier League. Cristiano Ronaldo is back in the Premier League. You played against him before when you were in Italy. So tell us, are you looking forward to tackle Ronaldo and stop him from scoring those goals? <laughs> yeah, of course. I mean, um, it was great news for the league. Um, I feel like he's been following me now. So, um, I don't know where I'm going to go next. Um, no, but it's going to be um, amazing to play against the best player, one of the best players in the world. Um, and when I played against him before in Italy, I think he managed to score against me <laughs> all games bar one. So I'm going to try and do my best this year to make sure that he doesn't score against Watford. So um, it's going to be a good challenge. And uh, that's the exciting thing about playing in the Premier League, which you're playing against the best. Yeah. So uh, let's come back home. Um, a lot of people do not know that you speak any Nigerian language. You see you as the Oyimbo boy in the Super Eagles. So tell us, do you speak any Nigerian language? I mean, the people guess right. I don't <laughs> actually. So um, no, I'm learning some words. I know some Ibibio words because um, that's the, yeah, the British. Well, so say well. one. Say something. Uh, how about it? <laughs> what does that mean? How are you? Okay. Idioko. So what do I say? Idioko. Idioko. Okay, uh, so you're back in Nigeria right now for the national team. Are you looking forward to the World Cup qualifiers? And do you think with the group Nigeria is right now that would, we will qualify for this uh, World Cup? Yeah, I believe so. I think we have an amazing team. Of course, the last five years have been like a process of players from previous uh, World Cups. Um, you know, moving on and a lot of young players being part of the team so last World Cup was my first World Cup and now um, all of a sudden I'm one of the experienced players and I just turned 28 today so it kind of shows thank you very much <laughs> kind of shows where the team is at we have so many young players and um, yeah I love playing with the team because we have so much talent so I'm very confident that we can do it and we'll just come down to us focusing and really applying ourselves to the matches and, and uh, also just being humble and, and keeping you know, some humility as well because every team in Africa is good 
and there's no easy game, so we know that even though we're favourites in the group, yeah. um, it's not going to be easy. So um, yeah, it's going to be very, very important for us to start well on Friday yeah. and yeah, roll on from there really. Okay. So let me put you on the spot right now. If you were to be like the coach in the Super Eagles, choose your five, your five best players in the team. First choice, Ekong, me and the team. <laughs> uh, no, it's, it's difficult, it's difficult, it's really difficult. Um, yeah. I think that is also saying a lot about the team because yeah. we have so many good players and even out of the 20, 22 man or 22, 23 man squad, yeah. there's a lot of players that are doing so well for their clubs that should be part of the squad um, at the moment. Um, but if I were to pick players who have been uh, in form now, I'd probably have to say uh, Wilfred and Didi. Um, I think uh, that Maduka has done very well in goal as well in Holland. Um, Leon was part of the team and man of the match in the Old Swam Derby last weekend, so um, yeah, he obviously deserved to be in there. Um, yeah, it's difficult. I feel like I'm going to leave players out for this. Okay, so talking about Leon, is, I heard somebody told me, a little birdie told me that Leon is your best friend in the team. Yeah, he is, he is. He's like my, uh, my older brother. He's um, 32 now. Oh my god, please forgive me if I'm wrong. Um, uh, yeah, so he's, he's someone that I look up to and he's been part of the team a little bit longer than I have. Um, but yeah, I have so many good friends in the team and uh, like I said today in my birthday speech, it was uh, yeah, being part of a family away from my family and I really mean that, so I love playing for the team and um, yeah, I feel like we have a real good connection and everyone gets on well. Thank you. So talking about family, you have a little boy. Would you allow your son to play football? Yeah, I mean, uh, why not? If it's his dream to, to become a professional football player or play for the Super Eagles, uh, then I'd want him to be the first blonde haired, blue eyed player to do so. <laughs> so I'll be backing him all the way. Um, and yeah, now whatever he's passionate about, whether it's football, or maths, or he wants to be a chef, or whatever he wants, I'm going to be pushing him to do it because I think it's important that he's, he does something that he loves. Um, and that's also going to be something he's going to excel in most if it's something that he enjoys doing. So, uh, I'll still make sure he does his homework, but if he wants to become a football player, then uh, yeah, I'm going to support him anyway. Great. So, um, one last question before we go. Um, tell us, you're a footballer, and you know we have this notion about footballers' lifestyle. What do you spend your money on? Wow. Good question. <laughs> um, I've always been um, quite disciplined with my money, to be honest. Um, so now I've come into a different stage of my career uh, where I've worked up a lot um, but I've always been someone who's invested a lot of money uh, in property that's my, my thing I'm really interested in, to, in it and it's also something I wanted to do after my career so um, yeah I think that's probably my number one spend is um, yeah, property houses uh, but besides that I do like some other things some watches <laughs> probably know. Um, but again I, I also buy them because they're investments because yeah if you buy a good Timepiece is something that I only appreciate, so I'm not really someone who will spend things on, uh, on uh, things that I appreciate or I can't give to my kids when they grow up. So mm -hmm. that's kind of my golden rule. So it has to be something that's going to be worth more in the future. Yeah. Thank you so much, William, for coming on the show. There you have it, guys. Footy moment with Nabila with William Trust, Ekong. Stay watching and keep playing. Mexico 1986. Um, uh, and of course, and of course, it's not Mexico 1996. Mm. It's Mexico 1996. Hmm. Let me guess. I think it's 19. Mm. Mexico.
Leon Balogun plays as a defender for Scottish Premiership side Rangers and the Nigerian national team. His first appearance with the Super Eagles was in 2014 and he has so far had over 41 successful outings. Right now, we're speaking to another international footballer, Super Eagles and Rangers FC, Leon Balogun. Although, the Balogun name, he doesn't know how to speak Yoruba. We'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, Leon Balogun. You. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Very well, thank you. Thank you for coming on Footy Moments with Nabila. You had a very good game, your derby in the Scottish League, Rangers vs Celtic. And you were the man of the match. Tell me, how do you feel about that match? Um, I was oh, I'm quite proud and really pleased about that. I mean, those games, that derby is the biggest game. Yeah. And we played like four times a season, it's the biggest game always. But for me, it was very special because it was the first time I played it in front of fans. Wow. I think I played in two so far, last mm -hmm. season, um, but to play in front of fans, to get the real old firm um, atmosphere, that was amazing. And then to be crowned man of the match was special, because um, I felt like I had to redeem myself a little bit after getting um, kicked out of the Champions League, where probably I received a lot of criticism after, yeah. and then to get that appreciation again from the fans, that meant a lot to me, so very special day. Yeah. We know, you know, football, as we all know, is full of the ups and downs. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you do something and the old fans are like, wow, the guy is good. And you make a little mistake, which I feel like the old team are meant to take that mistake. But they pick up like a player and be like, oh, you made the mistake, it's your fault. So I know you said you felt bad missing out in the Champions League. But right now, you're going to be in the Europa League. Yeah. So tell me what you expect to achieve in the Europa League. Um, I mean, I joined Rangers last season and we were on a really good run in the Europa League. Yeah. We just qualified again for the Europa League for the fourth consecutive time, which is really big for the club if you see where it's also coming from. Mm -hmm. Having been put into administration, I think, now, nine years ago, if I'm not mistaken. Rangers fans, don't kill me if it was wrong, please. Um, no, but it means a lot to the club financially, but also just for the prestige of the club. And I think um, Steven Gerrard, who's the manager and his staff, um, they're doing a great job in kind of dusting off the badge because the club has been through very difficult times. Mm. They've created an amazing project and we are just trying to lift it up um, every season. So we're very happy to be part of this Europa League again and hopefully we can get to the quarterfinals like we did last season or maybe even further. So there is an issue that is really big, you know, in the football world today and that is racism. Mm. And you know, we know you are the Oyim, you are like Oyimbo, you know, Miss Race and um, have you ever suffered any kind of uh, racism while playing football? And um, how do you think we can manage this issue? Uh, I think I have not, I've said it not too long ago, um, it was quite direct where I said I think we just need to start and really take action by just walking off the pitch. Um, the latest event that I was involved in or my teammate was with Rangers when we played in the quarterfinal um, return leg against Slavia Prague where Glenn Kamara he's um, Finnish but he's, he's black so he's um, of Sierra well, Sierra how do you say that? Sierra Leonean? Sierra Leonean. Uh, decent. And um, he got racially abused in the game in front of the whole world. So that was one thing. I was not personally affected, but the whole team stood together as a group there. So you see it happens even in those very um, high profile competitions. Um, I experienced something with a former um, Super Eagle, Tony Anthony Uja. Yeah. We played together in Mainz and we were just warming up. Um, in front of the away fans, we played Hanover, which was my first professional club. And as we just warmed up, they started to like make monkey noises towards him. When and then I just kind of stood up for him and said, like, just stop it. 
and then they came after me as well. Wow. So we both got abused, but back then actually I went to some of the guys in the stadium because I still knew them from my time. And uh, actually we accomplished or we, we achieved that those people were, came, came from, they got banned for life from, from the stadium. Wow. And then coming through the ranks as a young boy, I'm, I'm from Berlin, Germany. Originally that's where I was born, so we played a lot of games in the eastern part of Germany, away games. And there were heaven games where you saw those skinheads with like pit bulls mm. barking and shouting names, all these kind of things. So you grew up with it, even though I'm very light skinned, you just look different and you mm. kind of get a feel quite early that um, people look at you different sometimes. And it's not always a, a bad thing, but uh, some people will make you feel that you look different from them and that they have an issue. And it's, you just need to understand that. Actually, the issue is not you, but yeah, the issue but is within them. them. Yeah. But especially when you're young um, and you have a migrational background, then it's just, you can't get tough. So I think there's a lot of people who are like me um, in the diaspora who then probably develop some kind of anger towards their, I don't want to say oppressors, but yeah. um, their attackers kind of. So yeah, I think we still got a long way to go, but it's so rooted in, in people and in society, I think it's a hard fight, really hard fight. It's really sad, but we do hope that at some point there would be an end to racism and people will know that we are all one, regardless of our skin exactly. color. So uh, you're back here for the uh, qualifiers for the World Cup. What do you think would happen? Would Nigeria qualify for next year World Cup? Uh, well, we're going to go for sure <laughs> to Qatar. I'm going to see Qatar for the first time. <laughs> um, no, it's going to be big. It's going to be amazing. Um, I know what it means to Nigerians because you often read it in comments on social media or you hear people say it in interviews that football is the only thing that, you, like, that unites everybody. the country, brings everybody together. Um, so me and the rest of the team were always aware of that. And um, we always try to play our hearts out to make sure that everybody has, has a reason to celebrate. Um, but then again, it's not going to be easy. Everybody wants to go to the World Cup. Mm -hmm. For me personally, it would mean a lot because it would be my second one. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the targets I set for myself. So I'm going to go hard for it. Um, but yeah, obviously, World Cup, biggest stage in football. We also, as the Super Eagles, try to bring or lift the Super Eagles to a higher level. Because I think we are one of the best teams in Africa yeah. and we strive to be the best team in Africa yeah. and we have to just make sure that we put in the work to get there. Mm -hmm. So tell me, what is that one thing nobody knows about you as a footballer or as a, an individual of the pitch? Something nobody knows about you, exclusive. Well, there's a reason nobody knows <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah, so you're giving us uh, an exclusive. Maybe something that maybe not do you have lot. another talent aside from football? I was going to say that probably, what people do know, like my close, really close ones, they know that probably I'm quite a decent singer. Decent singer? Do you want to sing a song? No, I'm not sure. I'm, <laughs> I'm shy about it, that's the thing. If I would have more confidence, maybe by now I would have dropped a singer already, but uh, maybe, let's see how comfortable you can make me feel maybe by the end of this. We'll be right back. We're still talking to Leon Balogun. Finidi George is a Nigerian professional football coach and a former footballer born in Port Harcourt, Nigeria. He was one of the most talked about players in the national team during the 1990s. A proficient right winger, he made his international debut in 1993 with Ajax, scoring 18 goals in 85 appearances and winning the Champions League in 1995. Finidi retired in 2003 after 295 club appearances and 68 career goals. In September 2021, he joined Nigeria's Enyibaz FC as the new head coach. Real 
and we're still speaking with Leon Balogo. Leon, thank you for talking to us on this show. So tell me, would you allow your son? Do you have a son? Nope. Oh, are Not we yet. expecting one son? Nope. <laughs> okay, so if you get when you get have a son, would you allow him to play football? 100 percent yeah. Mm. Um, if I look at myself and see what team sport has done for me, then I think there's loads of positives. Mm. Um, but I would not force him. The thing is, if my son would be passionate about football and wants to play, yes. And I would make sure that he's on the fun side at first because that's the most important thing. I've seen loads of parents growing up that actually wanted to wanted their children to become um, professional footballers more than their children wanted it themselves and that's, yeah. I think that's the wrong approach. Um, but yeah, whatever my, my children, if it's a boy or girl, whatever they're passionate about, I will make sure that I plant that seed of them knowing like whatever you want to do, whatever you dream of, you can make it if you put in the, the work and if you're passionate about it. You need to start with a love for it and a passion for it and then enjoy yourself. Okay, so let's, yourself. Just, let's just get a bit playful. Tell me, what do you spend your money on? Uh, I'm a big, big fan of sneakers. Wow. So these ones are my latest, um, yeah, my latest gift to myself. Mm. Um, I really like sneakers. Um, mm. Nike's Jordans in particular. Um, I'm quite invested in fashion. It's not that I spend crazy, but I like to dress up every now and then. Cheers? Not really, just a little bit, but not not like crazy. Um, I try to be reasonable, reasonable with my money. So, um, on the if, if we talk about pleasure and fun, that's probably that like fashion, sneakers. Um, when it comes to investment and kind of things, then there's other things that I'm doing with my money, which actually help me provide for my future. So. Okay. So you know, a lot of ladies are watching this program and they are checking out your finger like, oh, is he still single? <laughs> <laughs> so tell me, is, the, is there a future Mrs. Balogun on the line or...? I have a girlfriend for two oh, years you now. Just yeah. You just broke people's heart, I want to tell you that. Sorry, 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 sorry ladies. Don't take it personal, but... <laughs> sorry ladies. <laughs> That's not what I, you, you said it all. Sorry, ladies. But there's someone who's got the key to my heart already. Okay, so, so please, you know, we, we want to finish this, but I still want. I'm, I've, been, I've, I've, I've been nice to you all through. So, can you just <laughs> sing a song? You know, that's your other talent. You know, who knows? Maybe one record label can just contact yeah, me that's, that's the and I'll be benefit, your manager. That's the positive side of it, but then again, just a song. Yeah, the thing is, I don't know if my voice right now is ready. You know, it's ready, it's much. ready. Just I'm not sure. maybe, maybe just a line from, you know, since thinking, you told me you can speak Yoruba in song, so maybe that line no, of that, that Yoruba in song. Not good enough, not good enough. Okay, so. I need to have confidence. So, another one. Um, you can cut this out, right, if it's bad. Yes, I'll cut it out. Let me just think. There's one that comes to my mind from Burner Boy, Time Flies. But it's not so easy. Okay. I really like the song Essence by Whiskey and okay. uh, so, uh, See, now I, I want to, but I'm getting nervous huh, because I'm shy. I'm not even looking so at it. I'm it's looking not at that, the camera. it's just I know the camera's on me and everything. No way. <laughs> um, why is it like that? Let me just calm myself down, okay? I hope we have a bit of time. Right? You don't need no other body. Hmm. You don't need no other body. Only you can hold my body. Oh. Only you can hold my body. And that's it. Wow. So, guys, Leon Balogun is super talented. He is a musician. Forget <laughs> don't take it too far. He's going to, to music. <laughs> Thank you so much, Neon Balogun, for coming on Footy Moment Thanks, with Nabila. There you have it, guys. Footy Moment with Nabila today with Leon Balogun. Until next time, stay safe and keep watching. See ya.